Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In this video on Physical to Focus, you'll learn how to use your own bouquet when it comes to customizing your depth of field blurring. You would do this if you're matching a real world lens or perhaps something creative with a real world sample. Either way, it's actually quite easy to do and all you need is a sample of the bouquet you'd like to use. You can follow along with this video by downloading the media. The download link is available in the YouTube description or type the link displayed on screen. Starting in a new batch group, you should have two source clips and they are both tagged as ASUS CG. The first clip is an EXR render from Maya with a few embedded channels. You have the Beauty Pass, the Matte or Alpha Pass and finally a Z Depth Pass with absolute values that you'll normalize in a moment. The second clip is a bokeh sample. This sample was extracted from a real world lens and you can use this to extend your bokeh options beyond the included procedural controls. As a tip, if you want to extract a bokeh of a lens, I suggest shooting a light against a dark background. All you need is one good frame with the bokeh and you can use the paint tools in Flame to refine your sample. There is also nothing to stop you from taking an existing shot and painting out the bokeh and reapplying the bokeh to the same shot to enhance it more. So there is loads of potential here. Now lastly, before we get started, a very important point to note is the resolution of your bokeh sample. Typically, the bokeh resulting in a blurred shot is not very big. So a small bokeh kernel should be sufficient to create a pleasing result. You also need to consider the processing time for the convolution. The bigger the sample, the longer the processing time. Unless you need the bokeh to fill the entire frame of your shot, having a massive bokeh resolution would take a large amount of time to process and will be totally unnecessary in most cases. The general rule is to keep your bokeh sample small for the best performance in the least amount of time. The supplied bokeh sample is 300 by 300 and this should be more than enough. Now let's set up physical to focus and then you'll use the bokeh sample. In batch, use either the matchbox node or the matchbox tab and load physical to focus as a node. The reason for using a matchbox node as opposed to performing physical to focus in the action compositor or image node is that the matchbox node is currently the only means of inputting your own bokeh into the shader. So in Flame 2021, there is only one way to use a bokeh sample and I'll remind you again at the end of the video. Start off by connecting the beauty pass into input 1. Next, connect the Z Depth Pass into input 2. If you want to use a mat, you would connect it to input 3. Now go to the result of physical to focus and let's quickly normalize the Z Depth channel. I'm not going to cover this in great detail as you have already gone through this in the previous videos. If you haven't, it's definitely worth a watch. Set the viewing mode to depth and set the depth normalization to near far. Next, you need to define the depth range to match the original CG camera. I already know this, so enable custom near far and set the far value to 1000. The depth data is now ready to use and switch the viewing mode back to the result. If you have correctly interpreted the Z depth render pass, you should already see some depth of field blurring in the image. Next, enable the depth position icon and place it at the base of one of the light bulbs. Finally, let's push the far to focus to 0.25 to create loads of bokeh in the depth of field blurring. Now that doesn't look bad at all. You could also switch to the highlights menu and push the gain up to 5 to make the bokeh even brighter in the shot. So this is what you can do with the procedural bokeh and if you switch to the bokeh menu, you have a number of controls you can manipulate to enhance it further. In order to use your own bokeh sample, you need to connect it into the node and change the kernel input. 
As a tip, if you switch to the shader menu, you will see that the bokeh sample needs to be connected to input 4. Go back to batch and take the front output from the source clip and connect it into input 4 of Physical to Focus. Now go back into Physical to Focus and in the bokeh menu, switch the kernel from Procedural to Input. You should notice an immediate difference in the look of the bokeh. If you zoom into the image and flip between Procedural and Input, you can see the difference between the two options. Obviously, the procedural controls will grey out, but you can still work directly on the bokeh sample if you wish to change it or enhance it further. Now before I conclude this video, if you want to try some different bokeh examples for experimentation or even production, we have packaged a few samples with Flame for you to use. Just go back to Batch and locate the Physical Lens Kernel Matchbox. Drag that into the Batch Schematic. When you look inside the shader, you can go through the pull down menu and pick out a bokeh sample you'd like to use. So these are the ones included with Flame, but of course you can import and make your own. So that is how you can use your own bokeh samples when applying depth of field blurring with Physical to Focus. Don't forget that the custom input only works with the Matchbox node and not the Action Compositor or Image node. Stay tuned for more videos, and don't forget to check out the other features, workflows and enhancements to Flame 2021. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel for future videos, and thanks for watching.